Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my ultimate autumn sweater guide. So it is starting to cool down a little bit more as we head into the new season and it's gotten me thinking a lot about knitwear. So what I'm going to do today is talk through the five styles of sweater that I like to have in my autumn winter wardrobe. I'm going to show you guys how I like to style them. I'm going to also talk about the types of materials that I look for when I'm adding a sweater into my wardrobe. And then finally, I'm going to talk you through the wear and tear, how I care for my knitted sweaters. So let's dive into it and start with an absolute classic, which is a crew neck sweater. Now the one that I've got here is from Grana. This is actually one of their cashmere sweaters and I think this one is on sale. So if you have your eye on this color, which is a really beautiful, uh, rich chestnut hue, then I would highly suggest going and checking it out. What I love about a crew neck is for me, this is the ultimate basic. You can throw this on with a pair of jeans. You can wear this to the office. You could, you know, pair it with a skirt and I think it just looks really classic, very simple, very understated as well. And it's kind of a bit of a blank canvas. So what I like with this is that you could wear a little collared shirt underneath, just peeking out from the actual collar of the sweater. And I think that looks really chic and it's a little bit preppy if you will uh, but I tend to kind of pair these mostly underneath the blazers so I think it's a really great way to add a little bit of extra warmth particularly as it's starting to cool down. Now this one that I've got here is a little bit looser fit through the body which I really like. I like having that little bit of room to move and I want it to be really nice and slouchy and cozy. I sort of want those ultimate cozy vibes which is what I really feel like you get with this particular piece. So that is the crew neck sweater. A really good place to start especially if you're just building up your knitwear collection. Next I want to talk about the v-neck sweater. So when I think about a classic v-neck I think about the crew neck that I showed you but just with a deep v design. Now, the one I've got here is a little bit more of an elevated take on it. It has a slightly wider v-neck. This one's from Everlane uh, and it's sort of got a bit of a dropped shoulder effect to it as well. Really billowy sleeves and then it has this beautiful ribbed knit material. Now the great thing about a v-neck sweater is that if you're on the petite end of the spectrum what it will do is actually visually elongate your frame which is perfect if you want to add visual inches to your height. What I love about this is that it gives a little bit more contrast I find if I'm wearing some necklaces or something like that so you're showing off a little bit of skin, feels a little bit sexier than the crew neck uh, but it also keeps you really nice and warm and cozy too. And the way that I like to wear mine is generally tucked into high-waisted skinny jeans because this one is so billowy. I find that that's sort of the best way to wear it because I love that balance but I also really adore how this pairs with a nice high-waisted skirt as well. I've actually got a leopard skirt which I think this looks really great with and just a nice pair of pointed toe pumps. So that is the v-neck sweater. Then the next one is a good turtleneck sweater. I've got a couple of these just because I think they are such great layering basics. The one that I want to show you guys first is this black one here from Kate Sylvester. You guys will have seen this in so many of my videos. I've had this for I want to say close to five years now. It was a sale find and such a good one. It's just a nice merino wool and it's really held up well over the years. It's got a little bit of a mock neck detail to it on this particular one but I like the fact that this is really nice and thin. It sits quite close to my body so it doesn't add too much bulk and it makes it really great for throwing on underneath dresses so it's how I tend to make some of my summer dresses a little bit more winter appropriate but I also feel like it looks really great on its own and again I love pairing this with trousers or with high-waisted skinny jeans. I just think it adds a really nice sort of tailored elevated look. Uh, it looks really uh, crisp and streamlined very sleek so I think these are a really great little basic to have I also have a second one here which I got from Cos and I know they've got a very very similar style at I and other stories if you live in the UK or in the US which I would recommend checking out because it looks equally lovely this one here is just in a dark gray and this one has a little bit of a sheerness to it so uh, again I think this is a really good one if you want more of a lighter layer you don't want to add too much bulk but you just need a little bit of additional warmth Next we have the roll neck sweater and honestly I could not do a video about sweaters without mentioning my Joseph oversized roll neck sweater. You guys know how much I love this thing. I bought it last year. It's actually still available. It seems to be one of their classic styles and I think it is 100% worth it. It has peeled up a little bit but that's sort of natural with uh, natural fibers like this. It's 100% wool and it's so soft and cozy and you can just get rid of the uh, pilled fabric with a shaver or with one of those deep pillars. Uh, I will link one down in the description box in case you're curious about what I'm talking about but I think these are the ultimate cozy 
sweater to have when it is cold. I really like pairing this with something that is a little bit more fitted on my lower half. I really like to balance out my proportions and I think this is the most flattering way to wear it. I also think that this looks gorgeous with tailoring. So with some nice work trousers and a high heel, I think it's really elevated and it makes it appropriate for the office. So that's another way that I would wear this. I've actually also got a pink one in a very very similar style which is from Stella McCartney and again also absolutely adore that I just think that these are such a great autumn winter essential and definitely something that you should have in your closet and then the last one that I wanted to mention is the cardigan now I'm wearing the one I wanted to talk to you guys about right now this one here is from Evelyn I'll show you guys cutaways of what it looks like but it's just a really nice it's a cotton cardigan it has a nice weight to it it's not too heavy which I think is really good just as it's starting to transition into the colder months and it's a really great layering piece so something that I can throw on over what I'm wearing today like I'm wearing just a little silk cami and this just gives me that added bit of warmth this one here is a wrap style so you could actually kind of wear it like a top and cinch it in at the waist which I think is really nice it kind of makes it a little bit more of a multi-purpose piece but I just think a great cardigan is a must uh, another style that I really like and I'm going to insert some photos is a good crew neck cardigan so think Princess Diana styles, maybe even twin set style, but I love the idea of wearing something like that buttoned all the way up and then just leaving the top two buttons undone. It sort of looks like a sweater. It's a little bit preppy, but I think it's also very chic and it's a really cool and I think more modern way to wear it. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the fabric composition that I look for when I'm purchasing knitwear. Now, you guys know I am 100% in favor of wearing natural fibers over synthetics. It's my personal preference for quite a number of reasons and it definitely applies when it comes to knitwear so generally I want something that is 100% natural fibers I am okay with a little bit of synthetic it really just depends on the actual total fabric content uh, that will allow me to determine whether or not it's going to wear well over time but I tend to avoid anything that is 100% polyester or 100% acrylic for a couple of reasons one they're not wearable so they're gonna make you really hot and sweaty Two, I find that the quality deteriorates really quickly over time so you might find a sweater that is super affordable looks really cute as soon as you throw it in the wash it starts to peel and the fabric doesn't feel the same it's not really a piece that is an investment it's not something you're gonna be able to hang on for, to for a really long time and you guys know that's really I'd say one of the underlying foundations of my entire wardrobe I want to get wardrobe basics that I've made for ages so that's kind of why I tend to go for natural fibers now the types of fibers that I look for one 100% cotton. Now, cotton is really great if you find wool is too itchy against your skin. Some people have really sensitive skin. Uh, there is different qualities of wool and depending on how it's treated, some of it's gonna feel a lot nicer against your skin than others. So I do think hand feel is really important, but cotton is a great alternative. You can get really nice, thick, heavyweight cotton sweaters. I've got this one here, which is from Evelyn. The one thing that someone actually mentioned this to me is that if you live in a really, really cold climate, cotton is terrible to wear if it is snowing a lot and it's going to get wet. So please do keep that in mind. I think that's probably why other fibers like wool are a little bit better because they dry faster but I do think it's a really good alternative and great to wear as a layering piece as well the second fiber that I really like obviously 100% wool and my Joseph sweater that is 100% wool it just feels really nice and soft this is obviously being treated which has helped to make it very super soft and it just feels nice and snugly and warm and I like the fact that it's breathable I also have my Kate Sylvester a uh, little sweater I mentioned before this is made from merino wool so again it does have a slightly more coarse is probably the only way to describe it texture than my Joseph one but this still feels very very comfortable against my skin it doesn't really feel like I've got anything itchy or scratchy on my skin if you want something super luxurious then I would say looking at some cashmere sweaters is a really great option uh, spending a little bit more is definitely the way to go because you can get something that's a little bit softer I do know Uniqlo make a really good cashmere sweater uh, as do from what I understand Marks and Spencer's however every single time I go on their website I can never find their cashmere sweaters they always seem to be sold out so I've just had terrible luck in that department but I've heard really good things the one I've got here is from Grana and also Evelyn do a good cashmere sweater as well it's quite skinny fitting through the arms though so do keep that in mind then the final type of fiber that I really like when it comes to my knitwear 
is alpaca and I have this alpaca sweater here from Everland. This one's actually got a bit of a wool mix content to it so it's not as soft as a 100% alpaca sweater would be uh, but it's just a really beautiful fiber. Uh, from what I understand it's also a lot more sustainable than cashmere as well so if you are looking for a more sustainable option then alpaca might be the way to go. This one here is a really nice kind of oversized fit. So in terms of how I care for my knitwear, because I know I get so many questions about this, so I thought I'd just show, tell you guys, so I thought I would tell you guys how I actually launder all of my knitwear. So what I tend to do is I will hand wash everything. If I've gotten some stains on it that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get out myself, then I will probably go to the dry cleaner just because with some of my knitwear pieces, they are quite expensive and I do really want to prolong their life as long as possible. But basically, I try to launder them as little as I possibly can. So between each wear, I will air them out. So the best way to do this is to maybe hang it lying flat or something like that on a clothes horse, somewhere where it's getting air. So if you're in an apartment, maybe putting it out on the balcony for a little bit or if you're in a house you've got a backyard putting it out in the backyard just so it can get a little bit of air and so that the fibers can breathe so that's the first thing that I will do the second thing is when it comes to actually washing them I will hand wash them so I fill up a bucket with cold soapy water I dunk my items in and then what I do is I massage them a little bit in the water and I leave them to soak for no longer than probably 10 minutes I don't want to leave the water in there too long and then I carefully wring out the fabric like this I don't twist it I squeeze because I don't want to distort the shape of the fabric. Then to actually uh, get a lot more of the water out, I will grab a clean towel, I lie it flat on the ground and then I put the sweater flat in the actual towel and I roll it up and then I will stand on top of the towel to press out any additional water and this actually really helps this particular step and then I lie it flat on a clothes horse. So that is how I launder all of my knitwear in case anyone was wondering. I know you can get special cashmere soaps and things like that and maybe if I can find a good one I'll link it down in the description box but I tend to just use the same type of powder that I use for our washing machine. If I notice that any of my sweaters are starting to show signs of wear, so in particular with knitwear, something that you might find is pilling. So that is when little balls of fabric kind of pill up and you'll notice them maybe around areas where your sweater has come into contact with other materials, like maybe where your bag has been or where your coat might rub against your sweater. If, I've, if it's a cashmere sweater, then I have an actual cashmere comb and I will run that across the fabric. You just do it quite lightly and all of the balls of fabric will come off. The other way that you can do this is with a fabric shaver or deep pillar, which will shave those balls of fabric off the material. So that is how I do that. I hope that that was really helpful for you guys. So that's my ultimate autumn sweater guide. I am going to have over on my blog a corresponding post where I feature all of my favorite sweaters for the season ahead. Personally, I don't really need any more knitwear. I think you guys can see I've got a pretty good stable, a really good selection. There is one sweater from Acne that I'm thinking about purchasing, which I might link in the description box if you guys are curious and want to go and check that out. But I think I'm pretty set in the way of knitwear for the season ahead. But I have found a few of my favorites that I wanted to share with you guys if you're on the hunt for anything new. I would love to know what your favorite type of sweater is. Please let me know in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're new here, please subscribe. I would love to have you back. I post videos like this every Monday and Thursday. I'll see you guys next time with a brand new video. See you soon. Bye.